What's up, boys? So today, I wanted to talk to you all about a question that I've gotten a lot recently in the past, I don't know, three to four years, and that is, why do I live a simple or why do I live a humble life? Uh, before we even get into this, uh, I I am, I'm not biased, I guess, but I do like Asmongold. I do watch a lot of his content. Uh, I think Asmongold, he probably wouldn't even admit it, or I mean, maybe he would, I don't know. But I think Asmongold created kind of this new genre of content, which is like reactionary content or the idea that you can you can use your stream to drive content to YouTube, which will then make people on YouTube go to your stream. Uh, it's a lot of what we do. You know, I, I think back in the day, the idea was you stream and then that's it. Asmongold made it to where his stream seems to be geared towards what's happening on stream is easily digestible on content via YouTube. I know people who love Asmongold, watch him all the time, but never watch his streams. They only watch, like his transmog competitions or him just talking on, on YouTube or whatever. So I think he did mark a big change in how content was perceived or created on Twitch. So I do like Asmongold's content a lot. I think he's great on Twitch. I think he's one of the better people to kind of watch or whatever if you're trying to see someone who's real or someone who's actually giving you who they are versus some fake or you know rage inducing you know character they're playing on, on on the platform so that that being said let's go ahead and see what he's got to say this is a question that people in my real life have asked me friends in game have asked me uh people i've known online for years have asked me people in my stream have asked me other streamers have asked me everyone has asked me this question and i thought i should make a video and kind of explain where i'm coming from and what i think so I think that the best way for me to make this video and actually do it is to start from the very beginning whenever I was younger and show you kind of what's happened in my life to make me arrive at the position that I'm at now. So whenever I was a lot younger, and I'm talking about ages, I'd say like six or seven to 13 or so. So I think Asmongold, and you know, he hasn't even explained it yet, but I think a big reason why people like Asmongold is because he is real. I mean, he is what he says he is you know we're we're to believe that he's just a guy who loves world of warcraft who lives his life who wears the clothes he wants to wear he's not rocking supreme clothing he, he's not you know ha he doesn't have blonde uh the the tiktok perm looking hair he's not selling out for instagram or twitter or tiktok or he's not doing dances he's not doing you know all the stuff you see these other content creators do so i think his brand was built on him being real and whenever your brand is built on you being real, it's much easier for you to just be yourself. And that's kind of what, that's really the ultimate goal is to get people to watch you or interact with you or, you know, uh, want to hear your opinion because they know that what you're telling them is honest. And that's what Asmongold has done his entire time. All of elementary school, and I do apologize, there are a lot of fucking mosquitoes here. So I might be flailing around for a little bit of time in this video, but I did want to record this outside. So anyway, um, this is whenever I was a lot younger, and I went out and I cared a lot about wearing Nike. I cared a lot about wearing nice shoes, and I remember my mom bought me a really expensive pair of shoes at Academy, and it was awesome, and I'd go and show them off, and people would think I was cool, etc. And these types of things and the materialism of it uh, was very appealing to me. It was very important to me. It was part of who I was as a person, and uh, I, I basically allowed that to kind of be part of what I identified myself as. And that was the case uh, all, through, all through elementary school and also all through middle school. And the real formative moment for me personally was in high school. Now, um, in high school, I, I didn't always go to the same one high school. I, I went to two high schools. Uh, at the very beginning, I went to a more upscale, a richer high school where you know, it wasn't like super, super rich or anything like that, but it was definitely more upscale. You had the kids who would drive the Hummers to school, and it was very obvious that these kids did not buy their cars from their McDonald's. Very similar to my high school. I only went to one high school, but it, it was like it was a private school. Uh, there were people driving Hummers. There were people driving jacked up Silverados. There were people, you know, so I can definitely, definitely relate to this. Donald's part-time job, okay? Their parents bought them very expensive cars, and they were very brand conscious. They were very conscientious about what they would wear, how they would look, how they would appear. And whenever I looked at those people, I thought it was so superficial and so worthless and so meaningless that it was just very off-putting and weird to me. And then I realized that I was also looking in a mirror. And I realized that 
while those people were doing the same thing, I was just doing it to a lesser extent. And if I had as much money as they did, I'd be just like them. And yeah, I mean, like, so when I, you know, when, when people are in high school or junior high school or whatever, it's totally natural to want to be popular. You know, like that's how humans are. Humans want to be perceived as good or cool or valuable to their tribe. In junior high school or high school, your tribe is your classmates. If wearing Sacconis or New Balance or Birkenstocks or Clarks make you cool, of course you want to be cool. I fell into the same trap. I don't know how old Asmongold is, but I think we're probably pretty close to the same age. And I might be a little bit younger, I don't know. But when I was growing up, the coolest things to have were Clarks, Birkenstocks, Sacconis, and New Balance. If you had anything else on your feet, you it, it wasn't cool, you know? And I didn't grow up with a lot of like, you know, my parents aren't, they're not superficial like that. They, they didn't raise me like that. So, you know, I'd wear just normal clothes. I'd wear just not brand stuff. And I remember one time specifically, I told my mom, like, look, we need to go shopping because I need American Eagle. I need Abercrombie and Fitch. I need Hollister. I need whatever. I need these clothes. Otherwise, I, I'm, I'm going to be outcast. And I remember we went and, and we went and, uh, and shopped and put on, you know, I got the clothes and I got the wardrobe. And if I was going to a pep rally or something, I made sure to wear my American Eagle shirts. And, you know, it, so it, it is a phase that everyone goes through. And I think that realizing that I didn't fit in with those people at all and seeing the conclusion that that type of mindset led to kind of allowed me to diverge from that type of mentality. And whenever I went to another high school, this was a much more poor high school, I fit in much better. Sorry to keep stopping it, but th that is important too. Is like once you get into the circle, you start to figure out really quickly like what you want. You know, some people just care about that image. They just care about the shoes and the shirts and the image and the parties and the cool girls and the cool guys, or whatever. But I know for me, even though I was in, you know, I mean, I was homecoming king in high school. So like, even though I was popular, my, my friends, like what I did, what I did on the weekends and what I did at night, I was still me at nighttime when, or after school, whenever people were going home and calling girls and, you know, doing all this stuff and worried about going to dances and worried about going to all that. I would go home and play with my Dragon Ball Z action figures and I'd go watch Dragon Ball Z or I'd watch uh, Monday Night Raw every single Monday. I watched wrestling. I played video games. I, you know, I, I didn't care about any of that stuff. I didn't care about all of that even when once it was available. And it sounds like what Asmongold realized was that he would rather just kind of be himself. And that's what I realized. I realized that if I was wearing Birkenstocks, it didn't matter because the people that thought Birkenstocks were cool probably didn't want to go home and watch Dragon Ball Z. So I'd be better off just being me and talking about Dragon Ball Z or wrestling or whatever it was. And that led me to finding my best friends. And my friends to this day, my best friends to this day, mostly are people I went to high school with and mostly people who were unwaveringly themselves. There, I liked it much better there. And um, I, I didn't really give a shit about that stuff anymore. I didn't care what my shirt said on them. I didn't care what uh, car my mom drove to school. These things were just completely meaningless to me because I cared more about spending time with my friends and being happy and doing the things that I wanted to do. And I think that's another big part of this is that a lot of people, I believe, do things, especially nowadays, uh, not necessarily nowadays, because it's harder to do things nowadays, but, you know, in the proverbial nowadays sense, uh, it's much, much more common to see people that they will do things because they feel like they should do them. They'll do things because they feel like they uh, would want to have done them. And I think that's even a little bit more acceptable, but it's mainly the people that push themselves into a circular hole whenever they're a square peg. And... The fact is, I'm a fucking triangle. I'm not like any of this other stuff. I, I'm myself. And I, I think that coming into yourself and realizing who you really are and not allowing a brand or not allowing a item or a piece of jewelry or clothing or anything like that to define who you are is extremely important in understanding who you are and, and building up your own self-image. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what we're saying. Like, you have to know who you are. You have to know what you want to do. You have to know what makes you happy. If what makes you happy is always dictated by other people or dictated by brands or merchandise or whatever, 
you will never be happy. If your validation is only from your peers and you can't validate yourself, that is a really bad place to be. You know, that is a lot of people fall into that trap and it just is, it is, does, it does not sustain itself at all. Uh, a lot of times whenever I was younger, the reason why I felt so uh, attached to these different things, why I felt like I needed to have Nike, why I felt like I needed to have you know, X, Y, or Z, my parents needed to have a nice car. Why is that really? What is the fundamental reason for that? And it's, I think, I believe, because I was insecure. I, I didn't feel like I was uh, enough on my own. I needed something more to become more than what I was. and. I viewed those brands and those different things that were superficial as a way to expand who I was and inflate who I was. And I realized that it was all hot air. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference one way or another. And I think as I've gotten older, um, I would always think about what would I do if I had X amount of money? What would I do if I had Y amount of money? And then whenever I got those amounts of money, I realized that I actually didn't really care about what I was going to do with the money. I cared more about having the money and being able to do those things if I wanted to. But the thing itself didn't really matter to me. I take actually great pride in having a cheap fucking shitty car. And I think that a lot of people might not ever look at things this way, but think about it like this. If I go out to Taco Bell and somebody keys my car, I don't care. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, it's going to piss me off, but it's not going to ruin my day. You know why? Because it's a shitty 2001 Mustang. It's worth $2,000. If I had a Lamborghini that was worth two hundred grand. I would be stressed out constantly. I would be worried constantly. I would be worried about the people that would park next to me. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, like that, that, that theory or that kind of thinking that, I mean, I get what he's saying, but that, that is a bit much, but what, what I think it really is, is a guy who just knows what he wants. You know, like why eat filet mignon just cause you can, when you'd rather have chicken nuggets, you know, like, just because you can live in a huge house or do or do whatever, it's like I like my house. You know, what, what does it matter if I'm playing on a ten thousand dollar computer or if I'm playing on a thousand dollar computer if both run wow just fine? So I think that's more of the reason. It's you know he doesn't he doesn't need the validation from a Lamborghini. He doesn't need the validation from saying yeah man I'm eating caviar even though I think it tastes like shit even though I taste take you know it tastes like literal just like raw fish. I'd rather just have fries and a, and a burger. And if that's what makes you happy and you know that and you're okay with that, then screw it. I would rather have Pizza Hut pizza than a $100 pizza that has gold flakes and, and crab on it, you know? I would be worried about uh, the quality of the car. If the car made a weird noise, there's a little bit of anxiety that would come. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that with a lot of these luxuries, uh, th these luxuries come at a cost, and the cost is not just the money, it's also your peace of mind. And for me personally, I don't want to have my life and my burden, or sorry, not my burden, I was about to say, I'm going to get to that. I would not, I don't want to have my life burdened by these meaningless things. I don't want to have to think about my car. I don't want to have to think about, uh, you know, my clothes. These are things that are not important to me. These don't make me happy. And I think that it's very important uh, for other people. I've said this many times on my stream. It's very important to buy things that make you happy, but it's equally important to make sure that buying things doesn't make you happy. And I think, for example, whenever I first got a little bit of money, I bought a 50-inch television, uh, and it was a great one. I, I've always wanted a large TV, and this was back whenever I worked at the IRS. It was one of my first paychecks. I went and I bought that. And then after that paycheck, I just basically saved the rest of the money because I was like, okay, well, got the TV, beat the game, I'm done. And I think later on I bought a computer with it, but that plus a little bit of my YouTube money. But other than that, I think that was really all I really wanted. And so the reason why I don't really care about these kinds of things is because they don't really, there's nothing that this, this enables me to do. Uh, driving, having a, a very fast car, a very cool car that can drive 200 miles an hour well, who gives a shit if you're just driving to Wendy's? It doesn't matter. Even if you're on the highway, if you go 200 miles an hour, you're going to jail. So the whole idea of having the ability to do this to me seems very unnecessary. It's completely pointless. 
So uh, it's like buying a brand new gaming computer to play Minecraft or Solitaire. Who gives a shit? And That's exactly what I'm saying. Are me and Asmongold best friends? So I think there's a certain amount of freedom that comes with not having things of luxury because you don't have to worry about upkeeping them. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, keeping them clean or keeping them safe or keeping them in the right condition. I don't have to worry about those things. And that leaves my mind open to think about and to worry about the things that I do care about and the things that really matter. I think everybody can agree that worrying about weird sounds that your car makes is not an enjoyable experience. And the more that you do that, the less that you're thinking about uh, how can how can you be a better uh, how can you be better at your job? How can you? I, I think this is like tearing on the Unabomber manifesto type thing where I get it, I get it, but you know, having a new TV or having a new car or whatever that doesn't automatically mean you can't think about your creative side or you can't think about professional development or whatever. Like it's okay to buy a brand new car and keep your car up and keep your car clean and keep your car. Okay. And you don't have like, it's not going to keep, you know, it, it's not one or the other. It's not, Hey, if you buy this new truck, you won't be able to keep up with your own you know, stream or your, your, your job or whatever. Like, it's possible to do both. I understand what he's saying. I understand. I understand the idea of why put any excess stress into your life, but it, that that's a slippery slope to uh, sending packages uh, to to air to airports and blowing up terminals. Create the next thing that will make you feel like you did something that mattered. How will you be a better friend? How can you be a better a uh, better son or parent or whatever? And all of these things now take a second row to the car the car who gives a fuck about yeah i mean like if blizzard would have developed a uh, mmorpg centered around pipe bombs we may not even have asmongold gold with the way he's talking here i mean it, it, that'd be like if you went to someone's house and they had no furniture and you're like why don't you have furniture and they're like well it, it clouds my mind i want to be free it's like, okay well i i i can it kind of makes sense but that's also kind of sociopathic about the car it just doesn't really matter to me and so uh, I think also another factor is uh, it's a matter of content, uh, contentness. I, I'm very content. I'm happy. I live with my mom. At some point in the future, I will probably buy a house when I, I move in with a girl and, you know, be maybe a slightly functioning member of society. But until then, I'm completely happy and content with living. This is much more, I think, the reason why he's not doing the Lamborghini stuff versus the Unabomber stuff. Go, go back to another personal example of me. When I was in like seventh, eighth grade, I was so content with hanging out with my family and my cousins and my grandparents and my, my own parents and my sister. I was so content with hanging out, out with them and doing stuff with them. I didn't make any friends. I didn't need to make friends. I didn't want to make friends. I was super content with my life. I was super content with, I used to get bir like birthday invitations from my classmates because back in my day, if you gave birthday invitations, everyone had to be invited. I would take the invitation and secretly throw it away before I got home because I didn't want to go to the birthday party because I would rather go hang out with my cousins or, and, my, and my family on the weekends. So that's me being content, but at the same time, I did need to make friends. You know, I did need to be social, and my parents made sure that I was social, and then it took a little, you know, it took a little bit of, a little bit of fighting, but we got there in the end. So there, there is a positive to being content, but I, it's also a slippery slope from where you don't want being content to stop you from developing as a person, or developing, you know, as as you are. You know, I've lived alone for, I bought my house three and a half, four years ago, something like that. And even though I'm, I was content with, uh, you know, having like dirty laundry or having you know, a dishwasher full of dishes or not mopping or something like it didn't affect me, but it was beneficial for my personal development to clean my house, wash my dishes, you know, make sure everything's clean, even though it didn't affect me one way or the other and being content is still one of those things where you can't always just rely back on the idea that as long as I'm content, everything is good. You know, it, whether you care or not, there are some things that you have to do to move out of that box of, of being content. Living with my mom and doing whatever I want. It makes me happy. I love my mom. I, I help her around the house. 
and uh, I help pay for things and clean things up and just, you know, basically live the life that I've always lived. There's nothing really that I've ever wanted more than that. Uh, there are things that I want, and those things that I want are not things. Many of the things that I want as a person, you can't touch. Many of the things that I want, you can't buy. And so what, what is really the point of, of having these things? Uh, there isn't any. Uh, they're just distractions. They're, you know, basically eating, uh, you know, I don't know, like eating junk food whenever you're hungry. Uh, it will not necessarily fill you up in the same way. And whenever it does, uh, the uh, side effects are not very good, let me tell you. So I think that's really where I'm coming from. And the reality is that I wake up every morning and I'm happy. Uh, almost all the time, right? I mean, there are things that depress me. I'm not depressed, but there are things that I think about them and it's like, fuck, you know, I've got a lot of problems with my teeth. I've been working through those, but I have a lot of problems with them still. And that really stresses me out a lot. That bothers me out a lot. And that is a problem that partially money can fix, but at the same time, it is what it is. But other than the things that are mostly immutable, I can't really deal with as, as easily. Um, I'm relatively happy and I enjoy what I'm doing and I like streaming. I like, I love making videos. I love playing video games. I love spending time with my friends and I love creating things. I love talking about things. That's the move, man. Like that's, that's beating the game. Beating the game is when you can just be happy. Whatever makes you happy, do it. I learned that a long time ago. Learned the hard way. Being on society's track, society's idea of what you're supposed to be doing at a certain age or a certain time or whatever, it doesn't always work. And it doesn't work for people. I know a lot of people who, you know, get married straight out of high school, their high school sweetheart, and they're miserable within a year and they're broken up and divorced. And it's like, they're trying to fit that thing that society tells you to do. They're trying to fit that into their life when it might not need to be there. Or people who take jobs and they're like, oh, I'm a I'm a banker, you know, it's like, that's a, that's what I'm supposed to do. It's like, well, you're, you're also miserable at your job. So just because it's supposed to happen or just because you hear it's supposed, supposed to happen, if it doesn't make you happy, as hard as it sounds, kind of just get out of it, you know, like kind of just stop doing it. That's something that I figured out a while ago that I just need to fill my day with whatever makes me happy, fill my day, fill my life, whatever, with what makes me happy. If it doesn't make me happy, Get it out of there. And most of the time, you'll be able to figure out the in-betweens. But that's that's the move. That's the algorithm in life. Things that I'm passionate about. And I love just doing things that make me happy. And I, I focus so much more on doing things that make me happy rather than having things that make me happy. Having things is more or less a burden for me now than actually a, a reward. Uh, I don't really live a very materialistic life at all anymore. I, I don't really care about almost anything other than things that have sentimental value to me. Uh, there's nothing that I'm really looking forward to getting or buying or something like that because it's just another burden for me. You know, if I get a new thing, it's like, okay, well, where am I going to put this in my room now? What am I going to do with this? Is this really going to improve the quality of my life or is it going to be just another burden on my everyday life that just gets in the way? And oftentimes it's the latter and not the former. And I think that's one of the mindset changes that I've had. I don't know why the hell he's talking about buying a ladder, but you know, we'll, we'll keep going. And I think that really for a lot of people, it's hard to actually get to the point where I'm at without being at the point where I was. And I don't really think that there's any way to uh, make that process any faster. I think that it's a completely internal thing. Y you can't really uh, goad this into happening. You can't, uh, you know, uh, kickstart this or anything like that. But I think that the first thing that if you want to do anything is to think about what really makes you happy. And if having X, Y, or Z makes you happy, think to yourself and ask yourself the former or the latter. It was a little ladder joke. I know, I know what former or latter means, but that was the, uh, that was a little ladder joke. You know, we're, we're, we're workshopping it, whatever. But like Asmogold just said, like he just said, you, the, you, you don't have a shot in this whole thing that we call life unless, unless you know what actually makes you happy. If you don't know that, you're at square one. You're at round one, first act, or whatever. You got to sit down in a room and figure out, okay, what makes me happy? What do I want to do?
what what do I want to fill my days with? What do I want to fill my life with? That is got you have got to be able to answer that question if you want to have a chance at all. Is having that thing what makes you happy, or is being able to have that thing what makes you happy? Because for me, being able to have that thing is what made me happy, and that's why I never really had to have the thing because I was happy at the very beginning. And so the real answer of why I live a humble or why I live a simple life is that I don't. I live the most extravagant, great life I could possibly ever imagine. I, uh, I'm surrounded by my friends that I spend time with daily. I have a great, uh, I, 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 I hate calling it a job. I, I, I really do, I hate calling it a job. But I, I have a great thing that I do uh, with my streams and my, my videos. I, I consider myself incredibly lucky and I'm very passionate about that in many ways. And that was incredibly profound. I'll, I'll let him keep going, but man, this was this is such a profound moment of the video. I, I want to hear how he finishes, but this can if, if you were going to listen to any part of this video, go back to about the 12 minute mark and just keep replaying this. This is very profound. I, I'm I have my parents that care about me and love me. I have my family that cares about me. I have my real life friends that I've known for 20 years and I still am friends with them and I see them all the time. I don't live a humble or a simple life at all. I'm extremely happy. Um, I, I, I don't need a, a expensive car or anything like that to have. I, I, I live a very extravagant life, a very, uh, I, I live a life of opulence. I mean, like the idea that, that just goes back to the whole materialism thing that in the eyes of whoever, you may look at Asmund Gold and say, look at the clothes he's wearing, look what he's eating, look where he's living, look what he's driving, and say, you live a simple life. And that's the whole point, is that who the hell are they? Who the hell are you to tell me how simple or how prof or you know how extravagant my life is? What makes a life extravagant or simple? I think if you can wake up on the, you know, if you wake up on the beaches of, of Fiji and you spend your day surfing and no worries at all, no depression, full positive vibes, you're eating good, you're healthy, you have a loving family, like, that, that is the most non-materialistic life ever, but that's pretty damn extravagant. You know, live, I, I, don't, I don't see, let's say the president of a bank and you're a slave to your job and you're sitting at a desk and you're sitting inside all day and you're begging for your day to be over and you're miserable at work and you go home and your family is, you know, you're in this 5,000 square foot house, but your wife hates you and your kids don't have a relationship with you and you're driving a BMW, and your kids have Mercedes, and you've got a townhouse in Montana, and those are extravagant things, but you're not living an extravagant life. You know, you're living an expensive life, but too many times do we use expensive and good or expensive and great as synonyms. That's just not the case. You know, a simple thing can be a great thing. A simple thing can be a good thing, even if it's just being home. You know, just being home alone or just vegging out, playing a video game for three hours. It's like, man, you wasted your Friday night. You were just sitting on your computer playing World of Warcraft. It's like, dude, I was having a blast. I was on Discord with my friends. I was That's exactly what I wanted to do. I was eating pretzels. I was eating combos. I was eating whatever. And I was having such a good time in those three hours. You know, like, it may seem simple to someone, but it doesn't matter what it seems to someone. It matters what it seems to you. And, um that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to do with money or things or anything like that. And so I wanted to share that with people because I think a lot of people need to hear that because I, I see a lot of people that are very materialistically minded and I understand that better than almost anybody does. And uh, it, it's also very, I'm sure, ironic for me to talk about this whenever I am so focused on collecting items. I, I care more about getting items in game than in, in real life. And that's absolutely true. Uh, because at least items in the game don't really take up space unless it's in my inventory and I think you guys have seen that so you can see kind of what my mindset is about that as well. So um, the point that I'm really trying to make with this is that try to realize and if this is like any, any bit of advice for anybody is that trying to realize what really makes you happy. That's what I just said. Thanks Asmongold. What, what you really want and I think for me it was more fulfillment, more than uh, more than the thing itself. It was the fulfillment and the ability to buy it. And 
more than that, what that meant. That meant a realization of the self, that meant a success. Uh, and, and I really wanted the success, not necessarily what the success entailed. The success entailing things is not, that doesn't really matter. Uh, I just care about the, the actual success of itself. Um, and I, I'm very passionate about pushing towards that and working towards that and doing things that make that happen. And it makes me happy and uh, that's really all I need. And um, many times whenever I make videos or I'm editing videos, I'm in one of the best moods possible because I'm doing the thing that I love to do. And I think that if that's something that other people can, can uh, catch, other people can, uh, can hold on to, it's something that just kind of completely changes your perspective on the way that you go about your life. And that's why I wanted to make this video and kind of give people my insight into it and hopefully people can see where I'm coming from. And uh, I, I, I try to help as many people with this as possible because I feel like it's just so important. Um, obviously, I'd be very curious to hear all of your feedback and a lot of the comments that people have for this. Uh, oh, we've given some feedback up in here. I've, I just, I've thought like two, three weeks on how to make this video. Hopefully, I've thought for about 15 minutes and 46 seconds. This is the best way. But uh, regardless, thank you all so much for watching. I really hey, no appreciate problem. it. And um, I'll see you soon. All right, man. See you later. Peace. Hey, peace. See you, dude. Take it easy. Man, I mean, you want to talk about just couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, uh, not, nothing. I mean, I gave my feedback, but it, I couldn't agree more. I think this is an important lesson that should be taught to everybody is don't chase the dollar. Don't chase the car. Don't chase the title. Don't, don't chase whatever. It's just whatever the hell you want to do, whatever you want in life. And that's the easiest playbook to figuring out life. Now, there will be hiccups. I mean, there will be times where, you know, you may get depressed, or you may be upset, or you might have a breakup, or you might have a, an accident or a disaster or whatever, or something unforeseen happen. I mean, shit happens, right? But there's no need to compound that with just slaving away somewhere you don't want to be. I remember when I first got out of college, I really, really, really wanted to be in radio. And I still do want to be in radio. You know, that, that is like I would consider a dream job. And I would I would send my resume or my demo tapes to radio stations and I would tell them, look, I'll, I'll make you a deal. If you hire me, I will work for free. I will I don't want a salary. Like in my head, I wanted to be the biggest, greatest radio personality on the planet. I wanted to be Rush Limbaugh, I wanted to be Howard Stern, I wanted to be Colin Cowherd whatever, Scott Van Pelt, Jim Rome. I want to be the biggest guy in the world. I want to be number one, number one rated, all that stuff. But I never thought about, I want to sign a 10 million, 500 or 10 year, $500 million contract. I never thought about a penthouse in New York. It was always like, Hey, I want the thing. I want the success. I want the, uh, you know, I want to say that I did it. I'm not worried about the contract. And I still, I, I mean, I still think that in my head sometimes of, well, if they're paying whoever $100,000 to, to be a radio host in New Orleans, it's like, well, I would do it for minimum wage. Like, I will, I will do it. Give me a year. Give me two years of minimum wage, volunteer work. Let me prove myself, and then I'll sign a contract where I won't be eating rice and beans. So that, and, and that doesn't always happen. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I graduated college almost 10 years ago, and I, I've probably received – maybe 10 responses to uh, probably a thousand emails sent out to radio stations and blogs and websites and companies and, you know, stuff like that. So it doesn't always work, but if it does fail, you'll be better off for having a foundation of understanding who you are as a person and all that stuff. So what'd y'all think chat? What'd y'all think about that video from Asmongold? What which was mine? So I know, I know Ben liked it. Uh, Ben said, uh, before I watch this video, I don't, I didn't really watch like I didn't really like watching Asmund Gold. After this video, I am number one Asmund stan on Twitch. I, I've been a big As Asmund fan for a while. I liked it a lot. Says Crafty. Yeah, I've been a big Asmund fan for a while. I mean, I, I think his transmog competitions are really good. <clears throat> um, you know, so I, I try and I try and catch, but he he changed. We can get to a bigger discussion now about just like the meta idea of YouTube and Twitch, but he really changed how a lot of it is. Like I watch a lot of Twitch. I watch a lot of Twitch and YouTube in the background, like as I'm cooking dinner or as I'm, 
you know, working out or something or just moving around the house. If I'm just like have my phone instead of playing music, sometimes I'll just play, I'll just play Asmund's stream and just like have the conversation in the background. And I think that's how a lot of videos are now or how a lot of content should be. You know, back five years ago, 10 years ago, it was the opposite. It was like a four minute, five minute video, superly heavily edited, super heavily, you know, engaging. If you think about like some of my FIFA guys in here, think about how KSI and Rodeshaw used to do their videos on FIFA. Well, now think about how like uh, Run the Foot Market does his videos. His are much more like 20 minute, cut out, unedited, from his stream, conversational. And those other ones were very different. Think about like uh, Dr. Disrespect or Ninja or something. N like their gameplay highlights, the thing used to be montages. No talking. It was like uh, montages of gameplay with heavy rock music, you know, heavily edited, graphics, all that stuff. Now it's none of that stuff. It's none of that stuff. And it's just these long form videos, these 10, 15, 20 minute videos where you're just there and there's really no editing or anything involved. And uh, I think Asmongold's a really big part of that new movement. Um, I mean, we, we did it. I mean, I know my old videos, my old FIFA videos, they used to be, they used to have all the stuff that FIFA videos had, the explosions, the, you know, if you take a shot, the gun sound audio effect, like all that stuff. And, uh, you know, we've changed, even our podcast, you know, like even, even if you look back at um, when we were doing like the weekend update type thing, those were heavily edited uh, pieces of content. But now our content is just free-flowing, non-scripted conversations, 20, 30-minute chunks, cut up, thrown on YouTube. And I think that's kind of where we are now. And uh, it's why Asmongold has been such a success. The message of do what makes you happy and try to care less about the material stuff is so simple but so hard to do. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's such a... It's so simple. It really is like the idea of don't worry about the materialism, but also don't worry about what people think about you. Because what? Because not worrying about what people think about you is kind of like opposite of human beings. Human beings are born to care about what other people think about you. But at the end of the day, it just doesn't matter. I mean, just like I said, like with the Dragon Ball Z stuff, I mean, or even wrestling. I mean, I still watch wrestling. You know, and, and wrestling, you wouldn't believe this, but in 2006, 2007, when I was a senior in high school, watching wrestling every single Monday did not get you girls. You know, that got you girls a whole lot less than wearing Abercrombie and Fitch and, and American Eagle. But what's, what's the point of living like that if you don't want to live like that? You know, like that's, that's just kind of the biggest thing is, my my general advice that I give people is live, be you almost to a fault. Like be unapologetically you. If if you don't want to go somewhere, if you don't want to go to a party, if you don't want to go to an event, if you want to stay home and watch 10 episodes of Gilmore Girls, watch 10 episodes of Gilmore Girls. If you want to go skateboard by yourself, go skateboard. You know, if you want to go do whatever, go do it. Who cares? Who cares? We only get one shot at this thing. You know, we only get one shot at whatever the hell we're on the planet for. And uh, there's just no point, no point in uh, wasting time.